Well, as you know, anti-Semitism is spreading all over the United States, in fact, all over the world. But now a shady pro-terrorist group is calling for direct action to, quote, globalize intifada. Joining me now is Kash Patel, former deputy director of national intelligence, former DOD chief of staff, former House Intel Committee and national advisor, and an attorney and author of Government Gangsters, a great new book. Thank you for being here, Cash. Cash, you know, you hear a lot of people talking about pro-Palestinian rallies, and there are some that are just pro-Palestinian, but, but this, is, this is real pro-terrorist. I mean, talking about the intifada is talking about using violence and using terrorism, is it not? Yeah, it's great to be with you. And look, civilian peaceful protests are one thing. But when you utilize terminology like intifada, words of war, words of terrorism, you take it to a whole nother level. And the things, uh, the reason I believe these are being tolerated by the ma mainstream media is this is not an overnight occurrence. You now have people on TikTok praising Osama bin Laden's letter and using it to justify pro-Palestinian efforts. Those are two in opposite approaches to national security that have been justified by the mainstream media. And the same justification is being used to fuel anti-Semitism because they think it's somehow okay. And that's just not the case, and that's not how you defend a nation. Don't you think we need to hear from somebody, whether it's whether it's the president himself or Mr. Mayorkas, somebody say, look, we're, we, we've got to revise our comments that white nationalism is the greatest threat to national security. It is now Islamic terrorism in, if, and the threat of that from what is happening in the Middle East. At, at least take away that, that nonsense that white nationalism is our greatest threat. Look, their job as the commander in chief and his cabinet in the national security arena is not only to defend this country, but to assuage our positions, our beliefs during a time of war. And that's exactly what they should be doing. Not just tamping down on white nationalism, but stop saying that climate change is the existential threat to the United States of America. We are in two more world wars since Joe Biden took office. Our southern border is a disaster. And we now have people praising Osama bin Laden at Baghdadi and the terrorists that are killing Americans and Jews and that are holding Americans hostage. You are absolutely right. The number one threat to the United States of America is radical Islamic terrorism, and they should just say that. You know, there's another threat, which is this administration's love of these globalist institutions like the United Nations, uh, which may in some fashion be forced on the Israelis once again to take over whatever happens uh, in Gaza after after they leave, after they, they clean out the, the terrorists that are there. Um, they, we keep hearing that, that Trump was, was a bad man because he got rid of the U.N. influence in Gaza. But in fact, that influence very often was bad influence. I mean, the, some of the schools that they, uh, they were funding had, had very pro-Hamas-like pro literature in it and lessons and so forth. President Trump removed funding from the U.N. program in Gaza in 2018. He was highly criticized by folks inside the deep state and the State Department, et cetera, for doing so. Uh, but it turns out it led to more peace. It led to the Abraham Accords and so forth, despite the fact that they said it was going to lead to the end of, of peacekeeping in the Middle East. Look, I ran President Trump's counterterrorism programs and then later was chief of staff at DOD. And I was fortunate to see the frontline mission set he had when it came to the defense of this nation. And he said, we will root out terrorism all over the world and we will do whatever it takes. That's why we were able to kill 98% of Al Qaeda senior leadership, take out Baghdadi, take out Soleimani, return 54 hostages without paying a single dollar. The terrorists were on the run. The Iranians were running away from a nuclear weapon, not towards it, and we were not giving them billions of dollars. In addition to, he used a multilateral system <clears throat> at the United Nations to say, if you're not going to help us, we're going to defund you. We're going to make it hard for you to trade with the United States of America. And people have to remember, the largest budget the United Nations has comes from the United States taxpayer That's dollars. Right. It's situated in New York City, where we continue to invite terrorists to give speech on American soil because we call it the United Nations. And all of those are levers the Biden administration could take to reduce the threat of terrorism. But what they are doing, it is fueling it and funding it. And these protests, these 
well, protest is putting it mildly, these, these criminal actions being taken by many, not just in the media, but on the streets for anti-Semitism's purposes is just disgustingly yeah. criminal and a direct result of it. Cash, quickly, because we're running out of time, I got to ask you about this $10, trillion, $10 billion waiver, the sanctions waiver mm -hmm. for Iran, because we know that there was this guy, uh, Rob Malloy is his name. He was the chief envoy from the Biden administration to Iran. He's been suspended because of possibility that he may have traded some uh, intel with, with the Iranian, his Iranian counterparts. Is, is that, he may be gone, but is that tilt, that sort of pro-Iranian tilt still present in the State Department? Oh, yeah. Joe Biden brought back everybody, Rob Malloy and others, who wrote the JCPOA, who gave Iran a pathway to the nuclear weapon. And then Joe Biden gave them $6 billion a month ago. Now he's going to give them another $10 billion. And they are going to use it for terrorism and weapons enhancements and nuclear programs. And I wrote an op-ed about not just Robert Malloy, but others that have infiltrated the Biden uh, Justice Department, State Department, and Defense Department. Mm -hmm. Who have been caught exchanging letters with the Iranian regime asking for permission. This is who is in charge of defending our nation against the world's largest sponsor of terrorism, Iran. Okay. I, I don't like to say it's scary. I don't like that word scary because because with fear is a bad thing to get involved with, but it is of great concern to all of us. Kash Patel, great to see you. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it.